Um, last night I had a dream. It was an odd dream. Now some dreams doesn't stick with me, but some do. Uh -huh. Last night I dreamt that I was in front of a, uh, like a, a, somebody was building something that was very, very powerful. Um, and it was, it was uh, like almost like an atomic weapon of some sort uh, that would do great things and uh, could destroy a lot or could, could do a lot. And as they were explaining it to me, they had, had set it in motion and they was allowing this fusion to take place. Now I seen this, I seen this thing as it began to work. It was a machine of some sort and it began to work. And as it began to work, it started changing colors. Now you know that, uh, that when we, any of us that here that ever worked with fire or been around uh, um, uh, furnaces or, or have seen uh, crucibles that were, that were burning hot, right. uh, we see that different, different temperatures yeah. even causes it to become different colors. Right. And this, this machine began as a, at a slow uh, burn, which was probably an orange fire, and then it changed to blue, and it changed from blue to green, and, yeah. and then pretty soon it started changing from that to, uh, to uh, uh, like a light bulb uh, over here that's not as bright as this one is. And then all of a sudden it became very bright. Pretty soon it became so bright you couldn't look at it, and then it, then it went off. And as it went off, or I was trying to get away, and I didn't know what it was going to do, and I was trying to get away. And someone uh, had said something, well, wow, I said, that is powerful in my dream. Right. They said, it's so powerful it could reach six miles into the ground and pull out something as big as an elephant and bring it to the surface. Right. And I know uh, how stupid that was, that was. I mean, that was just a dream, right? Right. And then all of a sudden, uh, my mind my, immediately went away, well, God is more powerful than that. Right. Yeah. He's the only one that can raise the dead from the time of Adam's race until the day that we're living in, yeah, right. knowing where every one of those bodies are and all the parts of those bodies are, yeah. no matter how many times they've been disturbed and spread around the world, yeah, right. one day there will be a resurrection yeah. and our God knows about it and I, He's able to resurrect not only them, but me included. Yes. Now that tells me something, that, that made me really think about the power of God. He's smart enough that he knows the hair that's on my head. Right. Amen. Every time that I take a shower, he probably has to subtract a couple. Right. And he's smart enough to know even how many stars are in the sky. And I'll tell you what, I look up at the stars at nighttime and I'm amazed at how many stars there are in the sky on a dark night. Right. Amen. I, my eyes get to the place where I can't see as many as my wife does. Amen. She said, well, I see a bunch over here. And I said, I've got this, this, this. Right. She said, well, look at all the stars that are there. Right. Well, eyes are getting dimmer yeah. but yet there's stars everywhere God knows them by name right and he knows who you are right. and he loves you and he knows where you live and he knows what you have need of right. before you ever ask him for it he knows that every one of us need to have salvation yeah. now God made you God made me he made everything in this world wouldn't it be wonderful to be in a place where everything that God made shouted glory one day it's going to be that way. Hallelujah. Glory is going to be everywhere. And we're going to be able to see it. Yeah. We're going to be a part of it. We're going to be saying glory ourselves. Yeah. Amen. I think not only the angels shout glory. Amen. But we are going to shout glory as well. Amen. First time I ever heard anybody shout glory. Amen. Brother Mock was his name. <laughs> and um, I went to church over to Bangor. It was a Pentecostal church. And Brother Mark, he was uh, pastoring sometime, someplace out in California and came this way on a vacation. And he came down to the church. I was just a youngster in the Lord, a couple of weeks old, probably no more than that. And here was this old fellow sitting over there with a mustache, amen, tall, skinny, amen, a suit on. And every once in a while he'd say, Glory. Amen. I thought, Why would he say, Glory? Amen. But soon he said, Glory, glory. Uh -huh. I said, well, Why would he say, Glory? Next thing you know, he said, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. And pretty soon it seemed like everybody was saying glory. Right. One of these days it's going to be a time where in everything that God has made is going to shout glory to God. Amen. And what a beautiful place it would be is to be right in the middle of that all yes. when everybody began to give God the glory and the praise yes. that's Hallelujah. due to his Amen. name. Now, right. he is a glorious God, isn't he? Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, here in the scripture, we see we said, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. Uh, do you believe in Jesus? He that believeth in me. I do. Yeah. 
He said, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me, I'm alive, I believe in him, he said, shall never die. Right. Believest thou this? Now, I may die a physical death. Right. Amen. Uh, but I tell you what, I'm going to resurrect a new man. Amen. Come on. Now, when I die, God's given me a promise. This promise that he's given to me is that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So when I die, they might put my body in the ground, but my soul or my spirit man is going to go back to God who gave it. And so immediately, I'm going to be in the presence of God, enjoying that place where everything shouts glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Everything sings praise yes. to the Lord. Amen. Be in that place where God is, and what a beautiful place it is. Someone said, what is it? Well, the Bible called it heaven. Right. Well, how do you know you're going to like it there? I'll tell you what, I've been in heavenly places a few times. Right. Amen. I've got in one this morning. Amen. I'll tell you what, and I like it real well. Amen. Come on. I think I'm going to be right at home when I get there. Amen. Uh, once, I, once I get accustomed, amen, to be in there. Right. And realize that I am there. Amen. Someone said there'll be three surprises when we die. First one, we'll be surprised, amen, that we made it to heaven. Right. And then when we get there, we'd be surprised that God didn't kick us out, but he loved us enough by his grace and through his mercy to forgive us of our sin and make it possible that we might see his glory. And all might be experiencing even the very presence of God while we're there. He said, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He said, believest thou this? Amen, I believe it. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, I'm going to go on to be with the Lord. But one day, if I do go by the way of the grave, by the way I might not, Jesus could come back today. That's right. I don't know if there's anything stopping him. Right. Bible talked about the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Yes, the dead's going to rise, but also we're going to be changed. Right. If we're still alive when the Lord comes. Right. Amen. But if not, I'm going anyway. Yes, sir. Amen. Oh, Bible right. said, if either I go by the way of the grave or whether I go by the way of the rapture, I'm still going. Yes, sir. That's my hope. It lives inside of me. Yes. It's my hope. It's my life. It's yes. my it's my uh, my destiny. Yes. It's my goal. Amen. It's the very thing that I work towards. Yes. As I serve the Lord, is to get as many people to go with me and because I'm going. How about you? Yes, Amen. And what he say? He said. He said, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. I read it in a, an article in this book, and, and I thought it was, uh, it was really good. I wanted to share it with you. Called Regeneration. Now the Bible said, uh, we are saved uh, by faith through grace, that not of ourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. Philippians, uh, or uh, Titus chapter 3 and verse 5, amen, tells us that we are, are saved by regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Here, a story told on regeneration. Talked about a caterpillar and a butterfly. So this is a well-known fact, although it is an ever-increasing wonder, that the caterpillar changes into a butterfly. There is certainly little... A resemblance between the two yet every butterfly has been a caterpillar yeah even in every person even that's ever been born have been a sinner right, right. today if you're born again you're a child of God Amen. and if you're a child of God you're no longer even that caterpillar but let's see what he said in this article he said the butterflies can truthfully say as they look at the poor caterpillars such were some of us but we are changed. Yeah. But we are changed. Yes. We're not the people we once were. No. And you know what? Uh, if I could build a, a tabernacle for God, even I probably could never do it justice like Solomon had done, even because he had God's plan when he put it together. Yeah. I couldn't build the temple that way. I couldn't build the tabernacle that way that Moses was given the plans to build the tabernacle as he did in the wilderness. And, but you know what? If I did build a tabernacle, or if I did build a, a temple, it would still be nothing but dead unless the Spirit yeah. of God moved into that temple and made it alive. 
And I tell you what happened, the tabernacle was built, the presence of God came down in that tabernacle, and then there was a cloud, even that covered the whole thing, and they knew that God was there. Right. Only Moses could come up to it at that time, even to, to, in order to, uh, in order to uh, institute or begin even that uh, tabernacle worship. Amen. Even then the temple was made, and after it was made, even God's presence came down into the tabernacle, or into the, into the temple as well. If God hadn't entered in, it would still be dead. Right. I tell you what, if we can, we can do everything that a Christian does. Right. If a Christian doesn't smoke, we can quit smoking. Right. If a Christian doesn't drink, we can quit drinking. Right. If a Christian doesn't uh, do drugs, we can quit doing drugs. Uh, amen, if a Christian doesn't commit adultery, steal, lie, cheat, and gamble, amen, we quit doing all those things, uh, amen, uh, that the Christian, amen, had quit doing, we would still be dead amen. if the Spirit of God didn't come into our heart and save us amen. and bring life into our life. He's the only yeah. one that can bring life. Yes. He said, I am the resurrection yes, and the life. Hallelujah. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. Hallelujah. The caterpillar sinner, amen, knows nothing of the delights of the beautiful butterfly or of the butterfly saint. Amen. One fellow said, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to Africa where nobody's ever heard the gospel. And I'm going to preach to them the gospel. Someone said, what are you going to tell them? He said, I'm going to tell them how good Jesus is. So he got over there and uh, he began to tell them how good Jesus was and they looked at him and, and they didn't know what he was talking about. Right. He said, well, what about a strawberry? Have you guys ever seen a strawberry? And they said, no, we haven't. He said, well, it's a berry about that big. It's red. It's got a lot of little seeds on the outside. It's sweet to taste. It's got a green cap on it. You pull the cap off it and you eat the strawberry and it's good. Someone said, I can take your word for it, but I've never had a strawberry, so I don't know what it tastes like. Right. The Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. God wants you and I able to take our time to taste Jesus Christ Amen. and see that he's good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The caterpillar sinner knows nothing of the delights of the butterfly saint. The only way a caterpillar can enter into the joys of the butterfly life is by being made a new creature. Yeah. Old things have passed away. Yeah. Behold, all things become new. It's Christ in us bringing life to us, giving to us life. That's how we know the difference. That's how we can taste the, uh, uh, the, the strawberry. Someone could explain it to me all day long, but until you give me one and let me put it in my mouth, chop down on that strawberry and taste it for myself, then I'll know what it tastes like. Come on. Amen. I can't tell you what Christ's going to do for you and what the joy of the Lord is and how good it is, but I can tell you what he did for me and how good it was for me. Amen. Amen. He took away my burden. He took away my sin. He gave me a life that was worth living. And I'll tell you what today, I like to tell people about it. Amen. God takes care of us. Hallelujah. Even a new creature. Amen. A new creature. By being born again. The cabbage loving caterpillar has no capacity for the newborn movements and the delights of the butterfly. No man can, the carnal nature of man, enter into the enjoyment of the things of God without being born again. If God doesn't bring the life into, the, into our lives, even then, even we are dead. Right. Well, that's what the Bible said anyway. The Bible said we are dead through the trespasses and sin. Amen. If we've never lied, if we've never cheated, we're dead because Adam was a sinner. And the Bible said because of this man, sin had entered into the world. And all men are now sinners. The Bible said all that sin and come short of the glory of God. Right. But because of the fact that Jesus, not the second Adam, but the last Adam, yeah. had came to and went to a cross and died and made, a play, made it possible that men could be saved everywhere. What a beautiful thing it is. Amen. Death was passed on everybody. Yeah. Job said in Job chapter 7 and verse 6, he said, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. In other words, without God, well, our life just passes us by. Well, I tell you, I remember not too many years ago, I was wanting to get my driver's license, and you said, well, I guess it was too many years ago now. <laughs> right? Must have been about when I was about 16 years old, 15 yes, maybe. Yeah. Now, that had been a few years back. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, since that time, my days have 
pads faster than a, than a weaver's uh, shuttle. Right. It didn't, that's what David done. That's what uh, uh, Job had said. Right. Life just passes us by. Yeah. But in the process of life, life happens. Things happen to us. Yeah. Good things, bad things, experiences that we experience takes place. Yeah. I've been telling you about uh, this fellow by the name of, of uh, Big Bart. Yeah. Amen. Big Bart had a rough life, like many of us do. Our childhood probably wasn't as good as it should have been. Well, Big Bart was a, a gangster, sort of a young man, a thug, if you please, living on the streets in Connecticut. There was a minister there that was wanting to ruin this guy named Big Bart to Christ, and so he worked for weeks trying to get him to come to church. Big Bart was rough, I mean, from the, from the onslaught, he was a rough sinner. I had a friend of mine uh, end up being like a spiritual father to me. He said the first time that he saw me, he said, I saw the world all over you. Uh -huh. I, the first time I saw him, I thought he was the devil in disguise. Uh -huh. Maybe that's because I was the devil in disguise. He was the great <laughs> man preaching the gospel and had been for several years at that time. But he had his old hair and he combed it back kind of like Elvis Presley. But he had this white streak down there right like a skunk down the front. <laughs> I thought he's got to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh -huh. I had him begged from the first time I saw him. He said, well, I'll tell you, the first time I saw you, he said, the world was hanging all over you. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, that's right. I was a lost sinner. I'll tell you right now, I was. I, Christ was uh, not my Savior. I was dead in trespasses and sin. But Jesus loved me enough to save me, yes. just like I was. Yes. Took me in just like, with the world hanging all over me. I remember I wanted Jesus so much, I walked out of uh, Sister uh, Zelma DeLoach's house, took that pack of, uh, of Marlboro cigarettes out of my front pocket, wadded them up, threw them under, her crisp, under a tree, yeah. left by her front porch. I should have littered, but I did. Amen. And I thought I was doing right. Went out of the church that night, God saved me. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. 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 He didn't tip me upside down, shake the habits out of my pockets. Right. No, sir. He began to change me from the inside out. He yeah. put a new heart Amen. in me. Amen. I became a new creature. Yeah. I was that tabernacle where God's spirit dwelt. Yeah. Even before that, though, I was lost and there was dark and there was no lights on. Yeah. I was dead yeah. in my trespasses and sin. I was yeah. dead even before God. But God loved me enough to bring life yeah. into my life. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, he'll bring into your life and he'll bring light uh, into your life as well. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you, brother Bob. I think I'm going to. Amen. Amen. With God as our helper, we're yeah. going to do it. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was praying and I was asking the Lord what to preach about. I had that dream and I thought about the resurrection. I thought about how powerful our God is to know where everything's at. Yeah. You imagine how many people that died out the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They're, they're not buried in a graveyard where you can go to a, a plot map and they'll show you right where they're at. Amen. They're not there. No. They went down in the ocean. Sharks ate them. Right. The shark, when they eat something, you know what happens, don't you? It just passes it on through and it goes down to, to the, where the plants eat them. Right. Yeah. And then something comes along and eats the plants, and every time it's moved all over the place, but God knows where every one of them are at. And every yeah. one of those bodies are at. And one day they'll all resurrect, yeah. even though they've been moved around many times. Yeah. Yeah. Even God knows. Yes. Yeah. We know better than just fertilizer right. after we die. Right. But God knows where we're at. One day there'll be a bodily resurrection. The Bible said that when Jesus comes back, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, that the saints of God are going to come back with him. Right. And they're going to join up to them bodies and they're yeah. going to be changed. And now, yeah. body, soul, and spirit, amen, they're going to be changed into a glorified uh, heavenly body. Amen. Uh, and they'll be completely, amen, with the Lord again. One day, I don't have to worry about the resurrection. All I've got to do is worry about what I'm doing in my lifetime right now. Right. Is it pleasing God or is it not? Absolutely. I'm going to read some scriptures for you. Um... Christ, Jesus said, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let's look at the life that Jesus gives to us. First, uh, St. John chapter 1 verse 4 said, In him was life. Oh, yes. I tell you what, I'm not looking anywhere else for life. 
I'm looking to Jesus because he's the only one that I know of that has given me a book. Amen. That, uh, that he has believed in so much that he gave his own self. Amen. That I might have this book and have this life. He said, in him was life, he said, and the life was the light of men. John chapter 10, verse 10 said, the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, I am come, talk about Jesus. He said that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. If you're here today and you haven't got this life living in you, then Jesus wants to bring a light into your tabernacle. He wants to bring life into your temple. He wants your body to become the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he wants no longer even to be a guest of where you would invite him in and tell him to leave. But he wants to become the host and you become the guest. Yes. He wants your body to become his creation and he will be the one that's doing the directing. Amen. And he'll do that for you if you'll let him. Amen. Let Jesus in. Amen. Amen. Uh, I read the scripture, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And also Jesus said unto them, I, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come unto the Father except by me. Yes. Romans 5, 21 said that, as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. He's my Lord. Is he your Lord? Yes, Eternal life is yours then. Yes. That's what God said. Yes. 2 Timothy 1 and 10 said, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Someone said, Yeah, but you haven't had to live in my shoes, and I thank God I didn't. You know what? If I probably had things had changed just a little bit for me one way or another, I may be a drunk today living on the streets of Benton right. Harbor in a cardboard box. That's right. I may be dead already in a grave somewhere. Amen. But God ordered my footsteps of light, and God's ordering yours right too because you're here in the house of God. You're here where hope is alive. Amen. You're here where, where uh, it's possible for men that are dead in trespasses and sin even to be resurrected and be given life. That's where you're at. What a wonderful thing it is. He said, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. You know what? Our lives shape us. Yeah. Our experiences that we go through from the time that we're old enough to remember <laughs> to the time that we die has shaped our lives. Yeah. Bart, big Bart. His dad was an evil man. Took Big Bart and all of his siblings and they brought him into the house, into the front room and set him on the couch while he beat up the children's mother with his fist. And he, and he closed the door and made them watch as he killed their mother. He took a paring knife and out of his, out of his drawer there and he cut his mother's, the mother of those children's head off and held it in his hand. Big Bart was just a boy and he couldn't take it anymore and he jumped up and he ran and he opened the door and he ran to the, to the place where the stairwell went down and as he got to the top of the stairs going to head down, his dad ran to the door, took his mother's head and threw it at him and hit him in the back and knocked him all the way to the bottom stairs and it knocked him out and when he woke up he was laying on his mother's head. No wonder Big Bart had some life uh, yeah. experiences that made times tough for him. Yeah. This preacher was trying to win him for Christ and brought him into the, into the, into the uh, mission where he was working at. And when he got there, he was so rough, he began to cuss and curse. And he cursed the secretary and he cussed her out. And that made her mad and she came into where the preacher was at and said, why don't you do something? He said, why don't you do something? He said, well, what do you want me to do? He says to her, he said, I think you ought to stand up, go out there and kick him out of here. He said, I've been trying to get him to come for six weeks now. Yeah. And he's finally came and because he's cussed you, you want me to kick him out. Right. And the boy that made her mad and she stomped out. 
And she thought about what he had said about Big Bart and what he had went through. She came back in about 20 minutes later. He said he had to hope that she would stay out for a day anyway. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> but she come back in and she said, Preacher, I guess what I, I want to say, I'm sorry. And I guess what I'm going to have to learn to do is to be cussed out. Right. He said, if it's at the expense of getting a soul saved, because I know never, I didn't know what he had went through in his life that made him so mean. Yeah. Well, he went on to get saved and serve the Lord. And what a beautiful testimony it was because someone put up with his sinfulness right. and long enough for him to meet the righteousness right. of a God who was able to save him. Right. His life has brought him through some very tough times and tougher than I've gone through, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I've gone through some tough times too. But in the process, the beauty of it is God takes the toughness that we go through. He builds our character and then he uses us for his glory. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, baby, we're going to be in a place where all the yeah. parts of the world, amen, is going to shout glory together. Yeah. Amen, as they give God praise yeah. and honor because he's the one that's able, yes, amen, sir. to bring them and to save them and to change them and bring them to the place where they're at. Amen. What a wonderful Savior yes, we have. Sir. I'm going to read some more scripture. God's good to us, isn't he? Amen. Regenerated. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26 said, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. God wants to take the stone out that's so hard that it can't touch God. He wants to put a heart in there that's made pliable, one that will receive the word of God. Will you receive him today? When we receive God's word, his word begins to change our thinking. Oh, some of you, and we all have our past. We all have experiences. Some of your experiences is far greater than what uh, mine are. When I use the word great, far worse, maybe I could say, uh, than what mine were. Amen. But in the process, God saved me and God saved you. Amen. Isn't that grace and a remarkable thing? Amen. John 3 and 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What a, what a statement. That statement caused a, a religious man by the name of Nicodemus to say, Lord, how can I enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born again, right. for I am old? Right. You see, his natural thinking wasn't able to do it. Right. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, because they're foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Neither can he know them, because they're higher than he is. Yeah. It takes that spiritual transformation. Absolutely. It takes that regeneration by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, 17 said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Titus chapter 3, verse 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's a regeneration that takes place in us. Well, somebody said, boy, if I could only know, if I only knew how I could teach them people to be better. Someone said, you can't teach someone to be better. It takes a change of heart. Right. It takes Christ in us, the hope of glory. Right. Well, we might change for a while. Amen, we might not even cuss when the preacher comes over to the house. Amen, but uh, we'll let him leave. Then we'll have him for supper and cuss him real good. <laughs> because the heart hasn't been changed. Right. But once the heart's changed and God gives us a new heart, we don't want to do that anymore. Right. Amen, sometimes we still do, but yet we don't want to. I'm glad that His grace is sufficient for us. How about you? Right. By the Word of God. 1 Peter chapter 1, 23 said, Being born again, uh, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the Word of God. Being born again by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Man, I'll tell you what, that's the kind of born again spirits I want. By the Word of God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 said, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him uh, that begotten loveth also uh, him that is begotten of him. 
I'll tell you what we can, we'll know that we have Christ living in us when we love the brethren. But we'll know it because Christ's love is first came to us and caused us to be loved and we realize God loves us. And if God loves us, we should love everybody as well. Amen. Amen. Uh, God's changing things. Amen. But I'll tell you what, if, if I had to walk a mile in your moccasins, mm -hmm. my life may have turned out differently. Yeah. But I thank God that he has ordered my footsteps aright. I'm glad that he knows what I need and he orders my steps. Even thy word, David said, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. In another place he said, thy word has become a lamp unto my path and a light unto my feet. Even light unto my soul. Even thy word, I thank God that it's by the word of God that he has saved us, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Oh, I'll tell you what, I thank God for his word. How about you? Amen. It's alive today, and it lives forever. He's a wonderful Savior. Um, I'm going to quit. Thank you, Lord. Let's take time to pray. Yes, thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for, the, for the power that you have. Uh, let me see in the Scripture... And Lord, I thank you because, Lord, you're the only one that I know to believe in.